Hello, my name is Jennifer Toms. I'm the editor of Archaeology Scotland's journal Discovery and Excavation in Scotland, or DES to its friends. I'm here today to launch the new volume. Many of you will be already familiar with DES and Archaeology Scotland and the work we do, but I'm sure there are people in the audience who are new to us. So I'd just like to spend a couple of minutes talking about what DES is and then what Archaeology Scotland does. DES has changed over the years. It has been in existence. This is the original annual report from 1947, a volume from 1979 and last year's volume, which detailed discoveries made in 2019. The first report came out in May 1947 when the newly formed Scottish group of the Council for British Archaeology issued their first annual report, which they state has been developed for the purpose of keeping local archaeology societies informed of recent and current archaeological activities. And they urged that reports should be kept to as comprehensive as possible and that they should contain a note of excavations and discoveries other than small finds in their local areas as they occur. The newsletter also talked about setting up a field school and running a summer excursion. These are both things that Archaeology Scotland continues to do today. We stopped excluding small finds from the journal and we're grateful for the notifications about finds allocated to Treasure Trove that we receive each year from National Museum Scotland and their treasure trove unit. So here it is, this is the new cover showing exemplary COVID safe field walking in D side, a Roman brooch and the ubiquitous romantic Scottish castle, among other things. Today, DES welcomes entries from anyone who's made any archeological discoveries in Scotland over the previous year. That's whether it's excavation, survey or post excavation work. We ask for a brief uh, summary of the work done, the dates in which it took place, the national grid reference and the location where it occurred. We also include the name of the contributor and the organization for which they work, if any. Finally, at the end of each report is the archive in which the full report can be located and the name of the funder of the work. Individuals doing unfunded research are welcome to contribute. Full details of how to submit an entry can be found in DES or by emailing me. The deadline for submissions is mid-November. Discovery and Excavation in Scotland also contains a report from our major funding body, Historic Environment Scotland, about the work they've done during the year, as well as a report from National Museum Scotland on radiocarbon dates obtained. We also list current postgraduate research and local authority archaeologists. Archaeology Scotland is a registered charity and a membership organisation, so we depend on our members for support. And in return, we offer them the journal and our magazine, which comes out three times a year. We also offer tours around archaeological sites led by expert guides, as well as publishing a newsletter of sites, attractions and archaeology related activities across the country. This is called Out and About. It comes out by email every two months. We run a field school in early summer and offer workshops, events, training seminars and access to our learning resources. Our Adopt a Monument initiative offers support to community groups who wish to conserve, protect and otherwise interact with their local heritage attractions. I hope that some of you might consider becoming members. It's quite easy to join on our website or if that technology fails, then you can phone us up and we can help you. So what's in this year's DES? Despite the restrictions and problems caused by COVID, we have a diverse and interesting set of archaeological discoveries being reported on. From the Flint of Mesolithic B site, through further exploration of roundhouses in the prehistoric landscape near Laird, to a Second World War secret bunker in Dumfries and Galloway, discoveries in Scotland last year are chronologically and geographically diverse. 
there are reports on the middens and shillings from the Western Isles and on some of Scotland's oldest, youngest and largest gas holders, as well as the 14th century Ancrum Old Bridge. We have reports from large commercial companies, from sole traders, from interested non-professionals and from community groups. We report on our own work as well with the young people on the hugely successful Canal College programme. I hope you'll enjoy this huge volume of Discovery and Excavation in Scotland, slightly slimmed down due to COVID restrictions, which have hit academic community and volunteer excavations particularly hard. However, I think it's plen there's plenty in it to introduce anyone with a passion for Scottish archaeology. It should be arriving on your doorstep in the next week or so. Just remains me to thank AOC Archaeology, Cameron Archaeology, National Trust for Scotland, National Museum Scotland, Sally Foster, Simon Davis and Ancrum and District Heritage Society for the photos used in this presentation and also to thank Historic Environment Scotland and all other contributors and funders for creating and supporting DES over the years. Thank you. <laughs>